Hello, Pioneer Nation. I hope you are doing well today. My name is Matt Williamson. And I am Corey McFan. And you are watching Married to Call G Sports. So we got some Valorant coming at your way this week. So in a few minutes, uh, our Valorant team will be going up against Ohio Northern University as part of the Great Lakes Esports Conference. And then we'll talk about a whole bunch of other matches coming your way. But as we're getting things set up for the lobby, let's take a look at who will be playing in our match uh, today in this best of three series. So we have quite a few people on the roster. We actually need to add one more to that roster because we did pick up another Valorant player. But I believe, and Corey, correct if I'm wrong, that we will have freshman Walker Dill uh, Wave playing. We will also have freshman Osvaldo Nero Octo Octagon, I think. I can't pronounce this game or tag. <laughs> Uh, we'll have our captain, senior Dylan Poles Res. We will have sophomore Jasmine Smith, extra explorer, although she's Winnie Hunt Jr. in the game. And we'll have senior Spencer Tenney Spence. And of course, we have our coach, uh, Derek Games. But, all right. Uh, looks like Marietta is in the lobby. We're waiting for Ohio Northern to join. We've already done the map picks and bands. So we'll go ahead and get that to you just so you can see. Uh, what has been selected? We're waiting for the lobby, and then if we have some time, we'll go over a couple of announcements. So, the way it's set up is, I can't remember the exact order of the bands. I think it was, uh, I'll pull up over here so it's easier for us it to see. It would be Pearl, Icebox, then Bind. Well, the, that's the order that, that was That was picked. Yeah. Okay, I was looking at the bands too. Ascent was banned, Breeze, Fracture, Haven, but yeah, Pearl has been selected first. Uh, Ohio Northern will be attacking first, and Marriott will be defending first. And this is the remake Pearl. Yes. So I think that's going to be very interesting, uh, like depending on how much time everyone's had on the Pearl remake. But the fact is Ohio Northern did pick Pearl first. So they must feel very confident on the, the remake. Yeah, I haven't played on the new rework for Pearl yet, so I have no idea what to expect for it. It could go very well either way. They might have fixed it towards more defensive side than it was before. Who knows? <laughs> well, we'll see. Uh, Marietta did pick Icebox next. Uh, that was one that they feel very comfortable with. And they are going to be attacking on Icebox. We've seen them play that several times with their aggressive approaches. Uh, and then the third map is going to be buying Splits on the list, but right now it's not really in the competitive pool. So it's like, yeah, we'll just ignore Split. Yeah. <laughs> but if we, do, if we do go to a map three, then it will be uh, Bind. But all right, we're still waiting for everyone to get in. So we'll go over a couple of announcements while we are waiting for that. Uh, so first, we're going to give a shout out to one of our supporters, HyperX Gaming, uh, the official peripheral uh, sponsor for Barrett College Esports. Uh, they supplied our team with keyboards, mice, headsets, mouse pads. Uh, they are amazing. If you would like to... Uh, consider your own HyperX gear. Please be sure to go to hyperx.gg slash ES. The QR code is up on your screen. Uh, but yeah, I mean, our students love it. We have it in here in the facility. They're amazing. Uh, also, shout out to our friends over at Over the Moon Pizza on Front Street in Marietta. Uh, every Tuesday, they are hosting a game night where you get your pizza, you can play some Super Smash Brothers and watch some of our matches, including the matches we're going to have tomorrow. So I believe they'll be doing that tomorrow. So uh, if you're hungry in the evening, go check out Over the Moon Pizza and you'll get a chance to see some of our games uh, over there. So definitely check them out. Uh, we are also in the middle of a fundraising campaign known as the Virtual Stadium Sellout. Uh, this is a fundraising opportunity for all uh, varsity athletic programs. And we are a varsity athletic program at Marietta College. So yes, we are on the list. So... All you have to do is go to the QR code you see on the screen, givecampus.com slash QHZGZI. Uh, and you can make a gift of any amount. Just make sure you designate eSports as your gift. And right now we're trying to keep, raise some funds uh, to help with growing our facility. Uh, we have 40 students in the program, but we need to get a couple more computers so we can accommodate everyone. Uh, we have ordered a couple of computers already, and that is because of the generosity of your gifts over the past several years. So we thank you so much for your support. Uh, and we are hoping to get uh, a few more. Uh, and I think they're asking about streaming here. Hold on one second. They're asking for the stream link. All 
All right. So yeah, just getting them the information because uh, they were worrying about the the stream. But yeah, um, yeah, we're looking to raise some funds for our computers. Uh, we're looking to travel to more uh, events. Uh, there's a there's some more in person tournaments going on in the area, so we would love to uh, to do that. Uh, we're also looking to organize some more uh, events on campus as well. Uh, we are looking and partnering with the Interfraternity Council here at Merida College for doing something later in the semester. Like last year, uh, we did a Smash tournament, which was a lot of fun. And so we're hoping to, to do things like that uh, for the campus and the community. So your gifts and your support would be greatly appreciated. Um, it looks like everyone is saying that uh, they are ready. So I'm going to make sure we have things uh, set up for the match. So. Yeah, so this is going to be Pearl. Marietta is going to be defending first. Beliefs. So. Yep. So let's get into this first map. Now, uh, like like before, I don't I don't know the new lineup, look new map very well. Well, mm -hmm. the changes per se. So right. That's I, a, that's fine. I don't know if the what characters are better on this map now that after the changes i know before fade and viper have always been a good reliable pick on this map which looks like Mar marietta is going with that so yeah it'll be interesting to see like like yeah there are changes but does that change the comps does that change how much does that change the composition and strategy from the original version of pearl now something that's new to me that i've never seen on pearl before it looks like uh, ONU has chosen Astra as their controller, which is new to me. So they might have experience playing Astra with the rework. I mean, they That's did the choose Pearl first. They wanted that, which makes me think that they have spent some time practicing the remake. And also maybe using the fact that maybe perhaps teams have not been using it. I know in our NACE competitions that we participated, uh, Pearl is not in the pool until next week because they want to give teams time to practice it. So Ohio Northern might be saying, you know, most teams probably haven't played this. So let's so let's go ahead and play it because we think that our opponents probably haven't played it a lot, which is a perfectly valid strategy. Get ahead of everyone else before they can catch up. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah, but Marietta will be on defense. Right now, Ohio Northern is eyeing site B. Uh, you never know, depending on Marietta's defense, they might uh, rotate, but we'll see in a few seconds, I guess. We will see. Anything can happen here. Mm -hmm. yeah, so right now, three of the pioneers are... You know, oh! And Spence may be spawning someone on. He does see right away. Gets a couple hits, but he's down to almost half health himself. And he's going to get taken out. And so will Rez, although Rez does get... A one for one trade. Spike planted. But Hound Northern does get the spike planted and they are going to fall back, probably just waiting for Marietta to head straight to the spike to defuse it. Although they can use that cover a little bit to maybe. Well, he's kind of blinded right now. If Soka's going to be looking, trying to defuse. And it's gets it at half. And Marietta is able to defend. Um, I mean, it's an interesting placement for the spike because they were able to use that corner as coverage. Owen, you played that pretty well, I believe. Planning spike to where they can watch it from long and then playing from long. However, Marietta just had a counterplay to that. They were able to put the smoke up so they couldn't see where they were exactly. Mm -hmm. And hi hide themselves just tucked around that corner so they could... It just diffused. It was just a perfect spot okay. to be able to disable it. It was just unfortunate placement on ONU's part. However, a good play for them. Yep. Yeah. You know, I did notice one thing. Oh, Aside the, the shot there by Rez... Wave isn't playing Omen on this map. Yeah, it, I saw that he uh, leaned towards Fade here, which is new because usually he is on Omen. Yeah, it's an interesting choice because he usually plays Omen on everything. So I'm. 
We'll see how that plays out here. Maybe looking at possible fight here. But Hisoka is going to be putting out the toxins. Got to fall back, but Weenie Hot is able to take one down, and Varietta is just doing very well. Now, Owen, you picked this map because they were ready for it, they wanted this map for sure. Mm -hmm. However, Marietta is just adapting really well to the changes they're adapting to the strategies that ONU probably has for this map specifically well it's also in the the, the gunfights as well so i mean even depending on the placement if you can win the the 1v1 gunfights then that's going to give you the advantage oh yeah for sure 100 <laughs> percent all right so it looks like ONU is going to be mainly I in sight A. Taking their time though. Soka does spot one. And Wave does fall very early, and that's gonna give Ohio Northern the chance to get the jump. Spence does get one from behind, but he's going to fall. And Ohio Northern has planned the spike. It is a 2v4. It's just Rez and Weenie Hut. Rez tries to go for the shot. Does. Weenie Hut does fall, and so does Rez, and Ohio Northern will score. Marietta just kind of put themselves in a pretty bad situation there. It seemed like a Hisoka. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Hisoka or something like that? I think like so. That. Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> I think that's how it is. Kind of played a little bit more aggressive, put himself in a pretty difficult situation to get himself out of. And because of that, he was able, uh, Owen, he was able to take him out, getting rid of that controller pretty early in the, yeah. in the fight. Yeah, as soon as they took him down, they were just jumping right onto the site. Stay focused. That round has begun, and this time it looks like Owen U is eyeing site B. They're kind of going back and forth between the sites here, changing things up and keeping Marietta on their toes. Uh, ONU is taking their time, looking for the opening. And Rez is going to take down one. And he gets another, but he falls. So it's a two-for-one trade, signaling the rest of the Pioneers that ONU is over there. And Spence did fall to the headshot by Firm. Bring them down. But now Onu is retreating. But Weenie Hut's going to get taken out from the, by being blinded. 30 seconds remains though. 30 I don't... seconds left. I don't know if ONU has enough time to even make it all the way to Site A. It just depends on how uh, well they are at traveling through the map, really. It's going to come down to if Hosoka can slow them down. 13 seconds remain, which could be enough time if they beeline for the site. Seconds left. And they are going to be able to plan it with just Five a few planted. seconds remaining. Standing. And they do secure the round and tie it up. It was looking good for Marietta there at the beginning. Uh, the two for one trade with Rez. However, Owen, you just swapped it up, did that quick rotate, able to giving them a free sight, able to take the round. I'm surprised that when Weenie Hunt went down, that the rest didn't just head over to site A. Maybe, maybe at that point they weren't so sure which direction Ohio Northern was going. Like they could have. Maybe he's baited Maria to site A and then go straight over to site B. But, I mean, when you only have that much time left, you just have to pick a direction and go. And they went, but Marietta was just not able to respond. Oh, 
Interesting, you know, he was going to be looking at Site B once again. And both Spence and Rez do go down. They're going to go straight to plan the spike. Wave is able to get one headshot, looking for another, but he's going to end up falling. Planted. Now it's just going to be Weenie Hot and Hosoka. Weenie Hot gets one headshot, but still has to take down three more, but I don't know will get the jump. Oh, and you just straight up just played that perfectly they played aggressive but not so aggressive that they just went in and died but they were able to get a couple picks rush on the site and take site control there it, it's those kinds of plays just that just like show how much you know the game and how just how well you, you can yeah they execute it, it seems like their strategy is take their time they don't have to rush onto the site immediately Get your surroundings, get slowly gain some control, find those picks, and then once you have the, the advantage, then you can jump in and make a play. And they didn't even even when they moved in, they took some time before they secured before they planted. Because I thought they were gonna plant right away. They actually waited until they knew the area was secure. Which is the smarter thing to do in most situations. And we're seeing a one point trade with Hosoka. To play. Let's play. Wave does get one down. And Spence is going to get one too. So will Rez. So right now, only one's left for Ohio Northern. The firm did pop the ult to get a kill himself. Yeah, great headshot there from Spence, and Marietta ties it up now. Now, just like oh, when you played the last round perfectly, Marietta played this one perfectly. They set the tempo to their pace, something that they can control, and they can control smart. You don't always have to be overly aggressive to get those kills. Just play your time. Take time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't have to deserve. I mean, they have Get out of my way. a minute 40 doesn't sound like a lot of time, but in all reality, it's plenty of time to make a move. I mean, they already got one pick onto Rez, and now they're going to be able to head over to the site. And right now, it's just Hisoka over on site B, and he's going to, he pops the Toxin ult, but he's going to get surrounded. Now Onyu is up five to three. Once again, they're not planting yet. They're taking their time to make sure the area is secure. Now they're starting to plant. Spike planted. Where are Wave does get one, but he's going to get picked off, and all that's left is Weenie Hut. And <laughs> just being taken down one by one. Marietta lost one on B. Hisoka popped his ult. Best counterplay he could get. Mm -hmm. However, the Prowler from the ONU's fade kind of gave him away, which is unlucky, mm -hmm. to be fair. Yeah, that's all good. He was surrounded on all sides. If that Prowler hadn't have given him away, Marietta very could have just won that round. Just with through that Viper ult. So right now, Hunter Northern is a little split. They're kind of just checking to see if Marietta's rotating around. Where are you? Bring them 
the wave is going to end up going down and so will res and that's going to give a higher northern opportunity to start converging over the site a although herself can take out one he actually gets two but how northern does get the spike planted See, Spence is popping his ult ability. And, and great use of the cloud to try to defuse the spike. Gets it about halfway. Hisoka with a 3k. And Marietta will defend. Dies at the last second, but it's still a win. It, it doesn't matter if he died. He, he secured that victory for Marietta right there. <laughs> If he would have stayed alive, would it have helped? Probably, but it is what it is sometimes. Things like that just happen in game. All right, when you is looking at site B. starting to converge. Rez was spotted. He teleports. Spence is able to take down one. But Rez will fall. Spence gets another one. Spence already with the 2k. But he's going to end up falling. We'll start planting. Wave does get the headshot. And it's a 1v2 situation. And Wave does get taken down. Ohio Northern will secure it. Yeah. Marietta did do better there. Try, trying to counter that play that Oni seems to be doing. Securing point first, then planting. They're playing a little, they were playing a little bit safer there. It seems, which is probably the best thing that they could do. Just play safer, don't get picked off. And it is unfortunate that they lost, however, they did do better that round. Mm -hmm. And it's still four to five, so very close. I'll find you. Still waiting. Right now, it looks like we may see a fight between Hisoka and Jet. Or maybe not? And Snake does take down Rez. And gets hedge gets taken down by Firms. That's already two down for Marietta. And that's gonna give Iron Northern the opportunity to head towards Site A. That's the only one remaining. Planted. The early picks on the Viper in the chamber there were very unfortunate there. Those are Marietta's two biggest ways of locking down a site and <laughs> setting the, the tempo in their favor. So whenever they lost the Viper in the chamber, they really had no way to hold that's sight. So at that point, it was a little bit of a lost cause. Just if you lose, it, or one, if you lose your sentinel, just an entire site can be taken just like that. Now we see Oni changing things up again, going all in on site B, and it's just Wave there defending. So we didn't see the smokes coming out. And he gets jumped on by Snake. This time ONU is planting very quickly. So both Spence and Rez get taken down. Only two remaining for High Northern, and it's just Weenie Hut left. And we're seeing that High Northern is putting on the accelerator. 
That's two flawless rounds in a row for a higher northern. That Last happened so fast. I'm not even 100% sure what happened. It, it, just, it just seemed like... Well, the... they, they, blind, they got the blind onto Wave and just... Like, they knew he was around that corner. So they took him down. And since he was the only one there, they were able to go in and secure the site while everyone else was trying to converge. And they were able to pick him off one by one while they were heading towards the site of the bend. Yeah, they... It's that quickly of a tempo. They just set it in their favor and they just rolled through Marietta. Alright, this is the last round before the swap. So, this would be the time for Marietta to pop their ults. And Spence is going to find one. Alright, who's going to be able to take that Winnie Hunt? And Highland Order is going to start planting. It is a 4v4. But Wave takes down one. And Rez is starting to defuse. But he's going to get taken down. But they are going to start working on defusing though. enemy remaining there. And they do take him down and will secure the round before the swap. I mean, both teams played that very well. Uh, Switching sides. Oh, and you got on the site quickly, got the plan off, put up the Astral. They were basically set. But Marietta played really well on that retake. They w were able to get that uh, Fatal off. And, the, and the, in combination with the uh, Hail ult. Just comboed well enough to where they can blind and suppress at the same time. Just took point, just like that. Retook it. Yeah, very well done. So now this time Marietta's going to be attacking. So we'll see if they... We've seen in the past, you use different strategies. First couple of matches, they went hyper-aggressive getting onto the site. We've seen in other matches where they would take a much slower approach. So I guess the question is going to be, what will be their attack strat this time? Looks like they'll have four go in and have Spence just check to see if there's any flanks from behind. Rez does get taken down early. But Weenie Hunt's going to take down one. But it looks like Meredith's going to rotate around. Unfortunately, Spence does lose the gunfight. And Ahsoka does get headshot during that. And Ferb just teleports right this that second as he sees Wave. And we need to take is taken down, so now it's just Wave versus four. Dream Seer. 30 seconds left. Takes down two, but... The thing now, though, is a high north that can just kind of run away and keep their distance, and they'll take the round. Wave does not have the... the, the spike. And if he turned left instead of right, he would have gotten them, but... Yeah, that was just unfortunate there. Very close call. He still could have fully brought out that win in that round there. Even if it's a 1v4, it can still be anyone's game in this in this. That's true, a lot can happen. So it looks like your are is going with a split approach. Ahsoka is already taken down. Flashbang. That tries to use the flashbang. Yeah, we're seeing quite the skirmish here in this middle area.
And that guy takes down both Rez and Spence. I mean, at this point, Marion just needs to rotate around. I don't know why sticking around in this area is the best approach. Brave does take down one. Weenie Hot takes down another. But it's just Weenie Hot versus three. In a 2v5 situation like that, there's not really a whole lot they can do. So in order to like, if they want to win a round like that, they have to be aggressive. They have to play risky. They have to be unexpected. Because if you're just going to do what everybody else does, then you, you're at a disadvantage because... You're down three players and you, you can't afford to play like that. Yeah, it, it's coming back to some of those gunfights. I mean, they lost to they lost in a two v one fight there, and that just gives High Northern the huge advantage. But we're seeing Marina converge in that middle area again. Spence knows there's one back there. Oh, actually, that's Wave. I'm sorry. And Spence does get taken down. But Wave is going to get a kill right as I move the camera, of course. And Wave is going to take down another, but Spence is going to fall. Wave right now with a 3k. He does get taken down. But right now, Hisoka will be able to plant the spike. And at least one from Ohio Northern is very low. Now it's just Ahsoka and Firm, but it's going to have to be careful here. And Marion does secure the round. It seems like Ahsoka went for a little cheeky lineup right there. <laughs> just to try to stall out Spike. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, if he can just kind of pull him out... And even if he does get taken down, it might be able to eat it up over the clock to prevent Firm from being able to disable. I mean, with those lineups, like, the Viper uh, Snake Bite, it just covers Spike entirely, so they can't defuse it. Even if they tried to. They would just die if they tried to. So that solid out, forcing him to him to try to get the kill. Stalling it out more. And we're already seeing an early pick by a Highland Northern. So Baron is using this middle strat again. Rez is able to get one. And Wave's able to take one, but he's going to fall himself. So one for one trade. Right now it's a three versus three. Flashbang. Spence was up the flashbang, but that's going to cause that guy to fall back. Let's just check in that spot. Teleport's ready. 30 seconds left. The Weenie Hut will start putting down the, the spike. But both Rez and Spence fall. Spike does get planted, but it's a 3v1. And that should be enough time to disable the, the spike. Now, it is a little bit strange that Weenie Hut has been taking spike every round. Because... They're playing, the, they're the only duelist for Marietta right now. The whole point of a duelist is for them to enter on the site, get info, 
and if they die, then that's when the sentinels or initiators come in and trade that kill. Maybe get one or two more kills off that. So, it is strange that they have spike because as an injury frag, you don't want to push into site, die with spike, and just have it there on site for the defending team to secure it. But it's almost like they don't they don't have Weenie Hut going in first though. It's always kind of behind the group. So Actually, this time they have uh, Spence with the the spike. They're blind with fear. No charges. The Rez gets taken down, and so does Rez. Very aggressive play, spike but just does not A. work. Last player standing. Oh, and you just took out Marietta one by one there, just letting them come to <laughs> go to them and just holding those sight lines. Yeah, it's like they thought they had the, the upper hand, but they just got taken out as soon as they exposed themselves. A false sense of security. Yeah, it is 6 to 11, so Hogwarts only needs two rounds to take the map. However, it's still very possible for Marietta to swing this back in their favor. Oh, yeah, but we've seen all sorts of, of swings. But now it looks like Marietta may be going with their all group onto a site. So you see this block house, they're gonna fall back and rotate over to site B. Ahsoka will fall behind in case anyone tries to chase him down. Poison off. Okay, just using that wall, but going to get taken down. But Maria is going to be heading over. Teleport's ready. And Wave is going to get taken down. If Weenie Hunt gets one kill, Maria gets the spike planted. Now, how Gordon will be heading over. Fall, so it's a 2v4. Last player standing. Res takes down one, but it's just not gonna be enough, and Ohio Northern will be able to secure the round. Now it seems like Ohio uh, Northern has uh, decided to bring out a couple operators into this map. Um, Match point. Very very makes it very difficult for Marietta to push up onto push up through a sightline because just with fast enough reaction time, all you need is a body shot to get a kill with an operator. Just one body shot and you're dead. This is a critical round for the Pioneers. Iron Northern just needs it and they'll secure the map. They do have four ults and they're gonna have to start using some of these abilities just to stay in the game. They are so dead. And we see Rez already popping his. See, Wave is able to take down one. And everyone's actually popping their ults for Marietta. Bam. Rez is able to take down one. One enemy remaining. Wave is with the 3k. That did try to get some damage on the jack, gets about half health. I think we got a little bit of uh, a little bit of lag here. But I think they yeah, they're running away now and secure the the round. Now the fact that Marietta used all four of their available ultimates right now could hurt them later. However, if they use their the rest of their abilities, 
well enough, they can still hold against the other ultimates mm -hmm. on the other team. Okay, I think in their mindset, it's like, if they don't take that round, and they didn't use their ults, I mean, it's do or die at this point, so you have to do what you can to secure it. But yeah, that does put them into a tough position because Ohio Northern does have two ults ready to go. And I would expect at least one to be used. They might even use both just to try to secure the round. So it's just going to fall behind the smoke, use it for coverage. The wave is able to take one down, so that might be their opportunity. They have less than a minute, so they took a lot of time just to get to that one room. No, they're going to rotate. And actually, they take down the two people with ults. But Firm is going to take down one. But Hisoka does take down Firm. Thirty seconds left. And Wave will get the spike planted. So now can the rest of the Pioneers defend? I mean, 2v4, so they should have the advantage. It's still go either way, though. Teleport you never know. One enemy remaining. So Rez was able to get the frag, so there's only one left. And I think Wave knows. And Spence does get taken down. But... That should be enough to secure it. Everyone's running away. And Marietta takes another round. And just like that, Marietta is t can bring this back. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, it's not over yet. Now there's still the fact that Ohio Northern has their two alts ready to go. However, if Marietta takes them down early, like they did in the last round, mm -hmm. those ults mean nothing. Exactly. They've had to look for those early picks. And right now, Marietta's offense is a little spread. I think they're just looking for trying to win the 1v1 fights, it seems like. And Rez is checking if anyone's flanking from there. I don't think he's going to catch anyone yet. But Hisoka and Wave are heading over to Site A. Down. Meanwhile, the rest of the pioneers are eyeing. But yeah, I have other is popping those alts that we were talking about. We need how it does get taken down. Hisoka was able to take down one and securing Site A. Which is not good because the spike, the, uh, the spike is over at Site B. Yeah. <laughs> it's a 1v2 situation over on Site A, but... Spence is over by himself on B with Spike. Yeah, 1v3. But yeah, Spence is heading straight over 30 to the, uh, the site. Spence is looking to try to plant. It does get it off, but he does fall, so Hisoka's the only one remaining. He's going to get taken down. And that's going to be the right map. Defenders win. Very unfortunate for Marietta right there. However, very well played by Onyo. Mm -hmm. There were several uh, rounds where Oni just played perfect. And there's just there was just nothing Marietta could do about it. Yeah, I mean, it just 
well, execution. I mean, while they're on defense, Ohio Northern was able to take several rounds in a row. If we could take a look, I don't know if the yeah, take a look at the the timeline here when they did a swap. I mean, it was a little back and forth. We see that they took two rounds. Marietta took one round. They took three rounds. And Marietta took the lap, two of them before, while it was match point. But at that point, they were already uh, pretty well ahead. Yeah, eight to four uh, going into that swap. But yeah, overall, very well executed by Ohio Northern. But all right, so we're gonna get things set up for the next map, which I believe is Icebox. So we're gonna take a, a small break and get things set up. So we'll be back in just a few minutes. Alright, and welcome back. Uh, we got things set up for map two, so we should be starting in just a few seconds. The ready checks are coming out. Uh, this time it will be Icebox, and Merida will be attacking first. 
So as soon as we get things started, we will get underway. Just waiting for them to hit the start button. And they did hit the start button. Now, Marietta has had very good history with Icebox so far. So, it'll be interesting to see what ONU has to combat that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Marietta did choose Icebox, and I can't remember if they, I think they chose attack. I can't remember if they chose attack or not. I think they did, maybe, I don't know. Oh yeah, it looks like there was one substitution. Uh, Edible Drywall has come in for uh, Weenie Hut. And I don't believe there's any substitutions on Ohio Northern's part. I do not believe so. Mm -hmm. And it looks like they're kind of sticking to uh, what they had last round. Yeah, I mean, if the composition works, you don't need to change it. Although we do see Z-Bag. Debating the Sova pick. Mm -hmm. Now, Sova will be very interesting. This looks like they locked it in. So it's going to be very interesting to see what they do with it. Very reliant on lineups and uh, bouncing it off walls, just knowing how the arrows react to each wall. Mm -hmm. So this could be very interesting. Yep. And we're seeing Wave once again playing playing Grease this time and not the uh, the Omen like he normally does. It seems very uncharacteristic of him. And on top of that, he's a duelist now. So, goes all the way from control to duelist. This could be a very interesting game. Let's see how it goes, I guess. Right. Now, I know I was asking the chat about uh, showing the, the weapons and the items in Econ. We'll try to do that. Our, we've noticed that we've run into some lag and latency issues by keeping that up so that's why we try to minimize uh how much we press tab but we'll try to do it every now and then but they, we might have to there might be a disconnect and reconnect in the process we're not so sure why that's happening but yeah it looks like marriott is eyeing uh site a for this first round We're gonna see Marietta already working away the site. Kind of playing that little bit of aggressive strap we've seen before when they play Icebox. And Wave is already able to take down one. And they're gonna be able to plant an early spike. They're gonna fall back. Jisoka's looking to see if they're swinging from behind, but not gonna see that. Fence does fall, but Wave is able to get back. Edible Drywall falls. Now it's a 3v3. Look at the pop of grade. Does take some hits while doing that. Riz goes down, but Hisoka's gonna get one. And Wave with a 3k. With a 4k! They both die in the process, however. We talked they, about how that's okay. <laughs> that is okay for the first couple of rounds. But yeah, Wave... Basic, in a way, a 5k if you include himself. Yeah, and on top of that, with Marietta's aggressive play, like, getting on the site and planting immediately, they know exactly what they want to do, when they want to do it, especially on this map. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just like they're very comfortable with playing attack on... Icebox. And Spence already getting an early frag onto Snake. And Hisoka is going to do an early plant. Ghost of Isle Northern is over at Site B or kind of in the midway. Spence will catch one. 
Spence does get taken down, but I think he's willing to be the sacrificial lamb to, to buy the Pioneer some time. That one for one trade with the Viper is valuable, though. Hisoka does take down Chamber. One enemy remaining. And Hisoka there with the 2k. Really sneaky judge play by Hisoka right there. Very, very unexpected. You don't see that a whole lot. Yeah, we see Pioneer's doing very well. Good. One adjustment here just to see if it helps their performance. There we go. Now the question is, will Mary to continue to go for Site A, or will they change things up? Right now they're signaling they're going to go back to Site A. Hey, if it's done broke, don't fix it. It's not broke, don't fix it. Yeah, but at some point, Ohio Northern's going to catch that, and they're going to adapt. Also true. Use the toxin wall. Hisoka does fall. And so does Rez. Very against the spike planted, but they lose two of their members. And they're already starting to defuse. Brave takes down one. But I don't know if it was able to retake it. Now, Marietta did get onto site pretty quickly there and did get a plan off. However, they didn't have enough people alive to be able to hold that site. Well, that's what we were just we were talking about how how Northern was playing on offense yeah. in the last map, where they would get to the site, but they wouldn't immediately plant. They would make sure they secure it before they plant it. And I feel like Marietta should have done that, where like they try to plant and they got it off, but two of them died in the process and they couldn't keep it. Maybe secure site, maybe get one or two kills before planting might be helpful. Yeah, so they, I don't think they got it. Did they? They got one person down? I don't even think they did that. Yeah, like one one person. And Wave gets taken down very Spike early. Down a. So this is what we were just talking about in the last round. You keep signaling you're going to go to site A and Ohio Northern is there ready. And that's already two down for the Pioneers. Down. Edible Drywall does get one down, but is going to fall. It's only just two left for Marietta. Spent an edible drywall will start heading towards site B. I think they are gonna get spotted. And that was a I gotta give kudos for that ricochet, that bounce. Yeah, it looks like a uh, Z bag over here past geometry class. Just a little fun joke that we like to say about solo players. They pass geometry class. <laughs> For sure. That's all their kid is, just geometry. Yeah, but with that, High Northern does now tie it up to a piece. Getting a little bit of a spike here. We should be back here any second. round has begun it's lag left and right here yeah I think it's gonna cause us to reconnect yeah we're just gonna reconnect here it, it happens so right now Rez has taken down one spike and this time Maria does go to site B and they're gonna start playing the spike and they do get the spike down but now they gotta make sure they can defend it this time Spence does fall. Edible drywall gets taken down. Wave does take down one, so it is 3v3, but, but all three of the Pioneers are very low on health. But Chamber there with the ace. However, the 
Viper lineup did, has come out, but I don't no think it's going to be enough, and this. ONU is going to defuse it in time. A. Yeah, it just helped that they were able to I get halfway through fantastic. during that. So, if they had not done that, I don't think they would have necessarily had enough time. Huh? It would be close. If it didn't get half, they definitely would not have had enough time. Yeah. However, just because they got it to half before. Yeah, so that was a smart move that they actually were able to get halfway earlier in the round. And very well played Ace for firm there on the chamber. Oh yeah. Works. Now Arian is going to be looking at site A again. Which actually is a good idea because it's going to split up the defenses a little bit. And we're going to see that Toxin come out for Hisoka and use it as cover. Maybe try to see if they can plant the spike. And as a one for one trade, not necessarily in the same fight. But that guy does take down one, actually gets 2k. And they are already working on disabling. Last player standing. And they will successfully defuse. It is very unfortunate for Hisoka there to get set up on point with his ult. Get the team ready to plant. Have it planted, then get flashed in his ult and just die. Just getting rid of the ult entirely. That's the one risk of being grouped up like that. They, they're able to use that Toxic Cloud as cover, but when you're all grouped up, it's also susceptible to those kind of things. It was also unlucky that uh, Marietta used the uh, Ray's ult as well and got no value out of it. So that's just two ults just denied on Marietta's part. And they are down for the two. And we see Rez is going to be popping his ult. And already taking some hits. Spike down mid. So we're seeing High Northern is going straight for Marietta's spawn point to try to get some picks. And they're getting them. Spike carry is down. Soka is able to get one. But not able to get the second. And it's just going to be wave that's all that remains. And just being taken down one by one. It's almost as Marietta just doesn't seem to know what to do here because Owen is just playing that aggressive game right back at him and they don't know how to combat that. Yeah, High Northern's find the picks, they're winning the gunfights. I mean, it seems like Lockdown Barrier was hitting some body shots while How Northern was hitting landing those headshots, and that's going to make a huge difference. There's normal guns, it takes four body shots. It only takes one headshot. But Spence is able to get an early headshot himself. So speaking of headshots, although his Soka does get taken down. There it is, working their way. But Wave will get taken down. The double drywall will start playing, but he's gonna have to retreat and gets taken down by the lasers. Down a. So it's just Spence and Rez that's remains. At this point, they may be looking at rotating the site B. And if they're going to do that, they're going to have to move. They only have 45 seconds left. It's a little bit of a walk. Just a little bit. But I think Spence will be able to get it. Be Flashbang. He doesn't know that there's no one there. Left. You know, and he doesn't know that they rotated. They do now. They 100% do now. The rest is going to check it if anyone peeks. And he does take him down. He 
Who's starting to defuse, but... Yeah. And Z-Bag with a 3k, so he Back will be board. able to get the... It, it comes back to those gunfights. Yeah. Sometimes all it takes is just being patient and... Never give up. Marietta just didn't have fast enough reaction time to react to... Turning that corner. Right. So now High Northern is up 6-2. to two. So Marietta's gonna have... I mean, they... They got the first two rounds, but after that, it's been all Ohio Northern. Let's start this party. Satchel out. So you see kind of a split approach. Wave is looking to try to get some early picks over by Site B. But Spence is going to get taken out with the sniper. And so will Rez. And it's going to have to fall back. Really, a whole lot that Marina can do at this point. Tries right, to go for the shot, and Hisoka does get one. Up. Wave is going to be looking for a flank side. Does get one from behind. But he's gonna fall. Thirty seconds left. It's a three v two. Last player standing. Edible drywall gets one down, but Hosoka falls, so it's just edible drywall that's left, and he's gonna fall. And a high lord takes another round. Those two early picks that Owen you had on Marietta really just did a number all on what Marietta could do because that two-man disadvantage is just crazy sometimes. I mean, it stops your offense because there's not a whole lot you can do. Just like I said before, whenever you're down by that, that many, you gotta play risky. You don't have anything to lose at that point. Now it looks like Marina's going to go back to all in on A. Throws up the crate, not going to catch anyone. Jet is able to dash away. The Hisoka is going to fall. Wave tries going in, but just gets 2v1. Edible drywall is going to fall. Spike down and Ohio Northern was ready. Rez gets one. But Ohio Northern was ready right where he was teleporting. And just dropping one by one to all, all operators. Just They're just able to hold those sights better. Those long angles. They, not really much else to say there. Has begun. And early and Mary is going all in on right in the mid and firm getting two down with his alt. And Snake's gonna get a kill. With the spike down, there's just not really anything that Hisoka can do at this point. Poison's 
Maybe looking for an opportunity for a pick. He does get one. And two. I mean, he made the most of a bad situation. Oh, yeah, very. <laughs> uh, yes, he did. Yeah, he, he was able to take down two, which isn't the worst thing. Um, it's just Marietta knows that they're going to have an op at this point, so they can't be peeking those long angles. If they peek the long angles, they're just asking to be shot down. Well, I mean, they even knew the chamber was using the all, and they had to respect it, and just see like they didn't respect it because. Chamber was just able to knock out two very quickly. That's a good example. Like, you have to respect the up and the power it holds. But now it is the last round for a swap, and Mary has four alls. They need to use everything for this. Spence is already taken out. Wave is going to pop the rocket fuse. Welcome to my world. And they do pop everything. Although, they might have popped everything too soon. Maybe a little bit too soon. They do have the Viper ult. Rez is able to get two, so it's a 3v3, but Rez is going to fall, so it's just Hisoka and Edible Drywall left. An Edible Drywall trade, but it was just not enough, and the Highland Northern will be able to secure. And once again, just putting themselves in bad situations. Just giving them the opportunity to bring it back. Switching sides. So, so far, it's been all Ohio Northern ever since those first two rounds. Barry is just having trouble finding their stride. And yeah, once you get that site, uh, that site controlled, and the spike planted, there's no real reason to have a risky play. Just play around the site. Yeah, I think you can feel the the sense of urgency in that round. Like they felt like they just had to go in there and, and pop everything and get the spike planted. But after that, there really wasn't a lot of coordination what to do. Not at all. Deep. And using all the ultimates really hurt them later. Because now they have nothing to work with. And Soka does get picked off from behind. And Hydro is going all in on site A. And Merida has to fall back. Spike planted. And Spence does get picked off. Maybe is looking to make a play himself. Does get one down. Rez is going to be able to get another. Last player standing. And High Northern secures the round. Well, not really a whole lot they could do there. It was pistol round and ONU had the spike planted. So they kind of did have to play a little bit more risky there. Um, it was just really unlucky. Okay. That oh, when you're taking that round for Marietta. Just gonna give them a huge advantage on this round, and then they just need one more and they'll secure the match. And it looks like they're gonna be going in all in onto site B. The wave is gonna have to be careful. But Spencer's there to back him up, but still, it's just going against a huge wave there. Both wave and Spence fall. Double drive will gets one, gets two. Gets three. 
but it's just not enough. Just too much of an advantage that Hound Norton had. Very close call right there. 1v5 situation, and they had better guns. So he, there was just not really a whole lot he could do. He did really well for what he had, but it just wasn't enough to take it. But this is a critical moment. I mean, Merida has to win every single round if they want to stay in here. Iron Northern just needs one, and that will be the match. And it's looking like Iron Northern is going to be uh, eyeing Site A, and they may go for an all-in strat. Soka caught one, but it's going to get taken down himself. Rez takes that one, but Hound Northern will get the spike planted. But he's going to get taken down. They are going to start trying to defuse. One enemy remaining. Spence is able to get one frag, so all that's left is Edward Ruck. And Meredith does get the team ace. And this could be exactly what they need to bring it back at this point. They do have a very steep hill that they have to climb, but it is still very much doable. Yeah, sometimes all it takes is just one, one round, one play to change the momentum. Now we're gonna see how Northern is eyeing site B. They're looking to hope to get the numbers advantage and try to get an early pick and then go straight for the site. But this time Wave is going to be off to the side, but he's going to get taken off and that's going to be go move for Ohio Northern. And that was a great try from Spence to hit the flashbang onto the site, but gets taken down beforehand. Last player standing. And Hisoka is the only one that's left. And it's not looking too good for Marietta right now. And Hisoka is going to go down. Yeah. It was just a good try there. But the early kill. And then... Uh, we're not able to take, take out the spike planner. Now, Marietta did really well on Pearl. Really well. But... It did not seem like that energy carried over at all to the second map. It just seemed like they actually lost momentum. Well, it seemed like what happened, as I'm trying to get the scores set up here, because the first three rounds, Marietta was up 2-0. But whatever happened with that, Hydorn was able to adjust to Marietta's aggression, and then they didn't have an answer after that. They tried different things. They tried going to site B. Like they kept going to site A over and over again. Then they tried going to site B. That didn't work. They tried going up the middle and got picked off one by one. But it seemed like their strategy is go all in A. But if that doesn't work, they don't have a backup strat. Yeah, and you got to mix it up in this game because if you keep trying the same strat over and over and over again, the other team will learn how to read that. Mm -hmm. And they'll figure out a way to counter it. And if you don't have a backup plan, then... Yeah, it's... It's all about adapting. We were, we were talking about, like, hey, it's working. Like, if they if the strat keeps working, let's keep doing it. But Ohio Northern was able to adapt, so kudos to them to be able to adapt. But then Marietta struggled to adapt to Ohio's ad adapt. So sometimes you have to adapt to adapt to adapt, and that's what makes this game very interesting. <laughs> very confusing at the same time. Yes, it is. But, all right, so that's going to be it for us. But I do want to, before we leave the uh, or end the stream... We do want to go over the schedule for this week because we have a lot of matches coming your way. Of course, as OBS is lagging for a second. There we go. So yeah, we got something going on every day for you this week. So tomorrow we'll be playing Ohio Northern again, this time in League of Legends. That'll be at 6 o'clock. On Wednesday, the Valorant team will return going up against University of North Carolina Chapel Hill. That's right, UNC, 7 o'clock uh, on... A Thursday, right now, the Rainbow Six team is scheduled to play Ontario Tech. I, From what I've heard, that might get rescheduled. So once we know for sure, we will get that out to you. 
Uh, on Friday, our Rainbow Six team will have their first Collegiate R6 match, and we found out earlier today, I did not get a chance to update the image in time, that they will be playing University of Cincinnati, which is going to be very interesting because our head coach came from Cincinnati. So uh, That's going to be very interesting. Yeah, it'll be very interesting. We might have to lock him out of the room. <laughs> he won't. He, we just might say he can't coach that game. Uh, but, yeah, so that will be uh, right now scheduled for 8.30 uh, on Friday. And then Saturday, we got three things coming at your way. We got both Valorant and League of Legends playing against Tiffin University. Valorant will be at noon. League of Legends will be at 3. And then our Fortnite team will hopefully be able to compete in the NACE uh, Fortnite competition. Uh, yesterday they were supposed to, but there were some issues on NACE's end to getting that set up. So that game had to get postponed to uh, the 8th. So hopefully we'll have this up. So what will end up happening is uh, we won't be able to catch all of the Fortnite match, but we'll try to at least show... Uh, some of the the games after the League of Legends match. But yeah, for all the latest updates what's going on with Meredith College Esports, please be sure to follow us here on Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, uh, and TikTok, even though we haven't used it. 